desktop GPUs for MSRP? What is this, 2019? Well, let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube, Crash Wilcox, and today is a good day. Um, yep, desktop GPUs for MSRP. That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. So as you can obviously see from the title, I picked myself up a Radeon Pro W6600. And this is gonna be replacing my Radeon Pro W5700, which was a great GPU. Uh, probably, it still is a good GPU if you have one. But my original plan, um, this is my current workstation computer. I'll have this uh, video linked up here if you want to go check that out. But essentially, it's a Ryzen 9 3950X, 64 gigs of RAM, B550 Aorus Master, um, and it was using the Radeon Pro W5700, and it worked very well. And I was like, ah, you know what, maybe I can just get rid of it. I'll move to a laptop. It's just something in my heart that I like having a desktop computer. But like most of you, I probably thought the days of really upgrading, building, those was kind of going to be pushed down the road a little bit. And then as I was just kind of looking around online, I stumbled across the W6600 on Newegg. Got it for $699, which I think is MSRP. MSRP may potentially be $649. I don't know. But it's close enough that I don't really care. Um, so I decided, you know what? Screw the laptop. Well, I got the laptop anyways. Let's, who are we kidding? Um, I grabbed this and decided, you know what? We're going to make the work or the workstation pre PC work. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here today. So not sure if it's even going to be an upgrade. <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, just kind of going through some of the specs here on this. Let me see if I can pull them up. So what we're going to do in this video is just sort of kind of lay out the specs, what this card is. We'll go do a quick unboxing, you know, not a bunch to see here. Uh, I'll get it thrown in the computer and then we're gonna run through just the normal suite of benchmarks, right? Your normal um, sort of professional programs. And, you know, I am still a man. So we're gonna run through some gaming benchmarks and see how this thing can do. And that'll basically wrap up sort of the video. So. As far as this card is concerned, it's a lot less powerful of a card as far as, you know, power draw than the W5700. This has, I believe it says it pulls 130 watts is what it takes as, if you care, 28 ray accelerators, uh, 1,792 stream processors, and you guys will see this on the screen, 28 compute units, if that matters to you at all. Um, like I said, 130 watts, 8 gigs of VRAM, GDR, GDDR6, and um, 32 megabytes of infinity cache. PCI 4.0, or PCI 4 which is great. And yeah, that's about it. It's a one slot GPU, so it's pretty thin. Um, and if you guys care, <laughs> let me know. I may have a... Uh, I was thinking about maybe taking this thing and pairing it down into a mini ITX workstation um, just because this card is so compact. And um, that may be what we do. These are one of my favorite looking GPUs. They look beautiful. Um, the W57 was very powerful and they run whisper quiet. You know, for being a blower style card, essentially, they run whisper uh, quiet. I'm sure this one's going to be the same. We'll have to see once we get it in there, but they they perform well, they run quiet, they run cool, and I never had a single issue with the Radeon Pro drivers, which is really why you're paying that sort of premium price for this product. And um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this card open, see what is inside of it, and then get it thrown in this machine.
So that's the benchmarks and uh, it's been a few days. I've changed clothes, changed positions, but uh, I just want to wrap this up with kind of giving you my final thoughts if I think it's worth it for you. So the Radeon Pro W6600, as you can see from the benchmarks, I think it performs well. You know, 1080p gaming, it'll handle anything you throw at it. You know, I really feel like if you can get over 60, 70 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077, you can pretty much play anything you want to play. And I even think it'll handle, you know, I didn't test it in 1440p, but I think it would handle if you played maybe some older titles in 1440p, it'd handle those just fine. You know, you'd get well over 60 FPS and you'd be doing all right. Um, and then as far as the professional, you know, content creation type stuff, um, I think it handled that very well, you know, given the price. And if you compare it to last year's model, the W5700, which we did, you know, in these benchmarks, I think it's a far better value. I mean, only in today's America would the W5700 be $400 more expensive than the 6600, which it outperforms in most applications. So it's a good value by today's standards. In a sane world, no, $700 for that, not ideal. But, you know, it's not a card for everybody. You know, I think if you're into obviously heavy content creation, that's something you make money at or a lot of money at, uh, then there's certainly better, more powerful cards. You know, it might be worth it to invest in the W6800, you know, but that's out of reach for most people. Um, or if, you know, you're just, one of us, you like building computers kind of a thing, and maybe you're trying for some mini ITX workstation sort of thing. Perfect for that, right? The one slot, it's low powered, but still gives you decent performance. So it's got its pros and its cons. $700 is still a hard pill to swallow, but it's better than paying $700 to a scalper for a $350 GPU, in my opinion. So still can't stomach that. So at least here, you don't feel as bad paying a legitimate MSRP. So let me know again if you guys want to see some different benchmarks. I'll be happy to um, show those to you. And otherwise, please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you here. And that is all we got. God bless.